Lesson 7. Prepositions. Part 3. Bienvenidos a la tercera parte y final de la lección número 7. En esta oportunidad, aprenderás el correcto uso de las preposiciones in, on y at. Recuerda que puedes pausar, regresar o repetir esta lección hasta que consideres que domina su contenido. Prepositions in, on, and at. Although in Spanish, these three prepositions are translated as en. Each is used in different contexts. These three prepositions can function as prepositions of time as well as prepositions of place, as we will see below. Prepositions in, on, and at, as prepositions of time. The preposition in, as a preposition of time, is used to refer to long periods of time, such as centuries, decades, years, months, or part of a day. It is also used to refer to the number of days, hours, minutes, or seconds. For example, Right now, we are in the 21st century. Technology began to advance in the 80s. The first case of COVID-19 was registered in 2019. Americans celebrate Halloween in October. My husband goes jogging in the mornings. My cousin is coming from England in two days. The next alarm clock will start ringing in five minutes. The preposition in is also used to refer to seasons of the year. For example, pumpkins are harvested in the autumn. Most people prefer to go to the beach in summer. The preposition on, as a preposition of time, indicates when something happens, typically pointing to a particular day or specific date in the calendar. Here are some common examples. I will meet you on Friday. Her birthday is on June 5th. We're having a party on Christmas Day. The preposition at, as a preposition of time, is used to specify an exact time, certain times of the day, holidays or events without mentioning a specific day. Here are some examples. The meeting will start at 9 a.m. We usually have lunch at noon. Let's meet at Christmas. The whole family was at my daughter's wedding. Prepositions in, on, and at, as prepositions of place. The preposition in, as a preposition of place, indicates that something is within a space. It is also used to refer to something being within a larger area. In other words, it is used to show location within boundaries or within something. Here are some ways in which in functions as a preposition of place. She lives in France. They are waiting in the lobby. He is in the car. They are traveling in a plane. There are some clownfish in the tank. This island is in the Pacific Ocean. The preposition on is also used as a preposition of place, usually to indicate that something is resting on a surface or attached to an external part of something. It is also used when we want to refer to someone who is on public transportation and to something that is on communication devices. Here are some ways in which on functions as a preposition of place. The book is on the table. She has a bracelet on her wrist. There is a clock on the wall. People must walk on the sidewalk. She is on the bus. He is speaking on the phone. I like the song that is playing on the radio. She is looking for information on the Internet. 
Take a look of the picture on your screen. The preposition at is used as a preposition of place to indicate a specific point or location. Unlike preposition in, which suggests being inside an area, and preposition on, which implies resting on a surface, the preposition at is used to denote an exact position or a particular location without focusing on the interior or surface. Here are some ways in which at functions as a preposition of place. She is waiting at the bus stop. The conference will be at the River Hotel. He lives at 24 Maple Street. I will wait you at the entrance of the building. They are at the stadium. They met at the concert. To conclude this lesson, we will say that apart from the prepositions we have learned so far, there are other prepositions such as for, against, and with. Here are some examples. He lived in Spain for 13 years. This puppy is for you. She always turns us against the teacher. There is a chair against the door. I like coffee with cream. He helped her with her backpack. Con esta tercera parte, concluimos el tema de las preposiciones. Esperamos que el contenido de esta lección te haya sido de mucha utilidad. Te esperamos en la próxima lección.